So recently I was inspired to make a craft a bit like an F-15, only I didn't stop at one variant of it. And there's five of these babies right here. The one that I am looking at right now is the F-15 Active, which of course is modified slightly to test advanced aerodynamic capabilities and post-stall maneuvers. And um, the biggest difference between it and some of the others is the fact that it is using the Panther afterburning engines instead of just little Weasleys. And yes, I'm well aware that the little Weasleys should have been Panther afterburners for a true F-15, but these are not necessarily a true F-15. This one is the KX-15. That one's the, uh, what was that? That was the K KV or KF-15 active. This one, the KX, stands for, you know, experimental. It has an actual cargo bay instead of the fuel tank that is in the same position on the other ones. And in here you can see there is a little probe-controlled uh, rocket you can fire out of the bay, although it is very difficult to get it out of there. And there are, under the wing, little guided, basically, cruise missiles, because I'm, well, they can be used as cruise missiles. I have used them as cruise missiles. I have proven that they can actually be effective in taking down one of these fighters, but uh, you can also pretend that it's for some research purpose, or actually, you know, give it a research purpose. And this version is pretty much the main version. It has some stock weapons in the form of these small tanks with uh, little SRBs, and there is an aerial cone on the very front of it to make it a little aerodynamic. The monoprop tanks are empty, and these launch in sequence. The fuel tanks are angled slightly strangely, yes I know, but it helps with them giving a little bit of lift in air and making this less likely to completely fail to function as it needs to. In any case, let's go ahead and disable the brakes, accelerate to full throttle, and we're going to take off directly from here instead of on the runway like we normally would. And I'm also going to take off in this direction, because if I take off in the other direction, uh, there might be stuff that needs to load in that will lag us out. In fact, actually, I think that stuff has been removed in this save at this point, but I don't want to take a chance. And as you can see, you have to take off very gently from with this, with those drop tanks under the, under the wings. As you can see, it flies quite well, even with the bulky addition of those drop tanks. You can see there is, uh, actually, there's not a lot of drag from them right this moment. Uh, one design idea I stole from someone else, in fact, it's a big part of why I started building this at all, is using the circular intakes as a design feature as engine cowling, which I think is a pretty neat little idea. And as you can see, actually there is, there is um, at least from this view, there is no significant aerodynamic effect from these, but you can see there is a little bit of lift right there when I come inside, and you can see... Oh, that's a bit of lag. And you can see that, indeed, there is some drag and actually there's more lift coming off of those than there is drag, which I'm actually amazed by, but that's pretty useful. In any case, this can go pretty long range. I'm not really sure. I haven't calculated it out, but uh, just, just from a rough glance at the current altitude speed and uh, fuel use values, you can see we're using 0.33 out of uh, 22,000. Let's just say 22,000, even though it's actually a bit higher than that. And uh, we're going 270, well, now we're going 280 meters per second. Uh, I don't really want to pull out... Yeah, I do want to pull out the calculator. We've got 113.6 minutes of flight time, assuming that the fuel use is a constant 0.33 units per second. And in that time, assuming that we are going at 280 meters per second, we can go uh, 1.9 megameters, which is 1,900 kilometers. Quite a big distance. Of course, it can actually go further because you can fly at a more efficient altitude and of course, once you drop the drop takes, your flight will be even more efficient. Speaking of which, of, I am going to go ahead and drop these, but first I'm going to get us back on level flight, headed back inland, because I want to demonstrate that you can drop them at a relatively high speed without risk. At least I believe you can. I have not actually fully tested this, so this will be said test. All right, the acceleration seems to be slowing down just a tiny bit, so I'm going to go ahead and drop them at this point, and as you can see, they fall away quite nicely. Of course, they are full, and they wouldn't drop as fast if they were empty. And uh, I guess they're going to double as bombs right now, since we just dropped them on an unsuspecting area of ground. Um, they're going to take quite a while to get down there, though. 
I can still see them. Um, the recording resolution of this, you may not be able to see them at this point, but they're about there, where the mouse is, somewhere around right there. And uh, they've either despawned or they're just outside of visual range. Oh, and there's the explosions. All right, it's beautiful. And another idea that I recently came across on the KSP thread, on the KSP thread, subreddit, is the idea of using these mountains here, or at least this tippy-toppy pointy mountain in particular, as a way of testing a craft's ability to land in quite an uncomfortable and not well designed for landing an aircraft position. So we're going to go ahead and take this first version and go ahead and we're going to land it there. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just talk a little bit about how I how I designed this. I copied the form somewhat from someone else. I liked the cowling idea. I liked the idea of using some Mark II parts for a very smooth, slight hunchback to the plane. And then I very much liked how they used a wing connector and wing strake to form this little intake wing area. And then the standard wings are using this uh, structural wing type C in a couple of these. Oh, they're type E's. Yes, I really like how that came to be put together, and I also really like how you can merge the intake here in a way that looks pretty nice, and using NCS adapters to bring it down to a little bit smaller, and have this kind of extra little bump back here with these extra fuel tanks. Also makes a good place to mount your landing gear for the rear, and uh, overall I very much like the way this plane came together. There's our target. Of course, we're going to fire some missiles at it before we try to land on it. Because, why not? I have the missiles. And as you can see, they can hit quite effectively. Wow, that was uh, probably closer than I intended to get to running into the side of that mountain. I didn't know exactly how close I got. Kind of hard to judge distances sometimes. In any case, we're going to go ahead and just uh, fling these missiles off in a random direction and uh, apparently do a barrel roll. I was actually uh, going to turn around right then, but uh, I messed it up. So, um, we're actually flying at a relatively low speed considering the altitude we're at, and I don't know what thrust we're getting right now, but I'm guessing, oh no, it's, it's a pretty decent amount. It's actually lower more because of our dropping airspeed than it is because of uh, the altitude. Of course, you can see I'm dropping that even more. And I'm going to go ahead and lower the landing gear. I'm going to switch our radar to uh, ground, because if I don't, we're not going to get a good uh, reading here. I'm actually going to deploy the air brakes fully. In fact, I'm actually going to turn off the engines entirely. We're definitely not landing. We're going way too fast. I actually need to re-engage everything to regain control effectively. Um, I think we would have been fine even if I didn't re-engage everything so quickly, but uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I do not believe this thing can quite do a vertical. In fact, I can check right now. Our thrust to weight ratio, yeah, it's only about 0.83. So, and uh, you'll see that that does increase as we ooh, get into better air. Um, without the Panther after burning engines, like most fighter designs would use, you can't really have the same quite level of maneuverability and you don't really have the post stall capability that you otherwise might have. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and attempt doing a vertical stall landing by dropping... Mm, no, I, I engaged things way too late again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine back on, bring us around again. And uh, yeah, you can see how challenging it is to land on that peak just by the uh, movements I'm taking as I go around it. I'm going to pull pretty sharply right now. I don't want to lose too much altitude in this endeavor right now, and I think I'm going to try to go ahead and re-approach from this side. Um, our thrust to weight ratio is nearly 1, so we should maintain speed quite well until I cut the engines, which I've done now, and uh, actually we're, we're going to need more speed. We're not, we're not making it up there at this point. In fact, uh, in fact it's too late. We're going to hit the side of the wall, and uh, there is no parachute on board, so... Um, 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 EVA, 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 EVA! Okay, okay, now, now, get into the air. Now, uh, hold on, hold on. Deploy shoot? Nope, okay, okay. Holy shit. I saved him. <sighs> 
expected him to die. Whoa, that was close. Piece of frickin' shrapnel from the plane nearly came and took us out anyhow. Um, I want to get him down on the ground safely rather quickly though, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop us into a very steep dive here. And I will pull up at a lower altitude, of course. And in fact, this should give me ground altitude, please. Because we're not over the ocean. And things will not go well if I try to use that. Also, you can see I don't have them having a helmet on. I finally realized where the option was in the settings to change their default apparel. And uh, I'm quite happy that I found that, because I definitely wanted to. I wonder how many Gs you can pull on the parachute. Let's just do this. Oh, pretty damn high. That's that's impressive. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, have him set down relatively securely on uh, this area of the ground, rather than going down to a lower altitude. Even though a lower altitude would be safer, I just feel that uh, this is an alright place for him to land. And, and there's how you land relatively gently with the parachute. And McBurry lives again, lives another day. Now the KX-15 version isn't very different, it just has little extra features. So I'm not going to launch that one right now, but I am going to go ahead and show you the, uh, what you call it, the uh, KF-15 Active. And uh, as you can see, this can uh, take off quite quickly and maneuver quite quickly. And of course it has post-stall maneuverability as a result of the afterburning engines with gimbaling well, cross factoring, you know, etc. And uh, also, you can. Okay, I. I. Wow. Mm. That was not good. <laughs> that was not good at all. Well, in any case, I can show you now. I don't know how this plane got turned sideways, but this was an attempt to make an SSTO out of an F 15. It did not go very well. It was not very stable. It was put together very strangely, and. Uh, in a clippy way that uh, it's okay, but it's not really what I would choose to go with. This was also designed from the KX version, so it has this cargo bay which is uh, more clippy in a way that I really don't like. So this plane was appropriately named, clearly a bad idea. And I just wanted to put it here to show you in comparison. You'll notice that the wings are too far forwards. And the wings are not swept back as they are on this other one. You can also see that the tail fin has been readjusted on this variant over here, and the nuclear engines are in a slightly different location as well. Not that much of a difference in location, but still, slight difference. And uh, this one flies better, however, also the landing gear, you can see the landing gear are uh, further back on that one than they are on this one. This one takes off a bit easier. Unfortunately, there is a stability problem with this at uh, high atmosphere and high speed, so it is not actually capable of SSTO. I believe I named this the... Uh, oh, it's not showing right now. That's the KX-15, of course. All of these will be available for download, except for clearly a bad idea, because it's a bad idea. Ah, oh, yes, the KX-15 Starliner. X for experimental. Starliner, because, well, it's supposed to take you to space. Obviously, as I mentioned, that didn't work. Also, you can see, uh, as part of the tail redesign, um, it actually lost the bicoupler, um, which is another significant difference between this and the other ones. Um, and the clearly a bad idea. Oh, I almost clipped the, in the engine. You gotta be careful with that. And uh, it's very easy to not be careful with that. Of course, this wastes fuel like crazy at this level because the turbo fan is really optimized, or the turbo ramjet, I believe it was. Yeah, turbo ramjet is uh, really optimized for high altitude, high speed flight, so it does not do well lower in the atmosphere. This thing definitely has the fuel to make it to orbit, it just doesn't have the stability, unfortunately. And uh, it is using a regular fuel tank in this area, even though it bears the same KX brand as the other version. But anyhow, this is eventually, hopefully, going to be designed further into an SSTO. Um, I may not get to it though, I've been definitely very inspired with other projects and designs. And right now, I'm just going to see if I can actually land her successfully. She's probably uh, a lot more difficult to land because she's a lot heavier than the other variants. And um, especially with all fuel on board, since I didn't go anywhere near orbit, 
and she doesn't have an air brake, which means, woo, which means you can't. Okay, let's. Whoa. Okay, I stalled out entirely. EVA, EVA. Wow. Kerbals survive better than cockpits, unfortunately. In this case, the cockpit did survive. However, I knew she had a higher chance if I got her out of that. And now the cockpit's gonna roll sideways because KSP physics. The that's not how that works. Anyhow, at this point, since I messed everything else up, I might as well fly the... Whoops, that's the wrong button. I might as well fly the KX-15 and show you what it's about. Um, primarily, I'm actually just going to fly this to demonstrate the cruise missiles, because the cruise missiles are pretty nice. Uh, they're not the most effective to fire and fly, but uh, uh, unfortunately there is quite a bit of drag caused by the root part becoming the radial decoupler upon uh, firing one of these, but... Uh, yeah, it's all right. And as you can see, drops down. We can immediately control it. Uh, the unfortunate side effect is that, uh, oh yes, the 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 radial decoupler is actually not in the right spot. Um, of course, this thing has barely any lift. It does not have the best control for pulling up. So, oh dear. Okay. Whew. Almost thought I was going to immediately lose control of it right there and just crash it. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a ground altitude. And I'm actually trying to hit the VAV, but it looks like we actually launched um, too close. Obviously too close and in the wrong direction, but uh, if I had let this missile go out a bit before attempting to turn around, I would be able to make it to the KSC. Unfortunately, I did not. And there's massive lag loading things in. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, not effective against ground targets in the current... Uh, designation of how KSP handles uh, collisions with those things, but it is effective against air targets at least, or at least uh, actual vehicle targets rather than just static KSP objects. I'm going to go ahead and try to turn around and head back to the VAV one last time, just because I'd like to accurately demonstrate that this missile is capable of hunting down a target, even though you have to fly it a little bit strangely. Um, normally I switch to chase mode when I'm flying it, especially for the final attack. But in this case I believe we should have an effective enough uh, control even without that. And as you can see it does nothing to the VAB. But it is fun to fly. Thanks for watching, and as always I'll see you just, you know, making some fighters, not going to space. It's not like I have gone to space recently in some previous videos. Oh wait.